What's going on, good people of the internet? And it's time for Panel to Panel, the podcast where a bunch of folks shoot the breeze and talk about comic books and such. We are back once again, once again, where we sit here and talk about all the good nerdy news and occasional comic book subjects like roasts and uh, spotlights of all different kinds. Uh, you can catch this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, basically wherever you can get a podcast except for SoundCloud, you can catch us out there. So definitely check, check us out. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at PTP underscore podcast and be able to fo- uh, hang out with, with our social media manager, Ian, and talk about comics every day. Um, my name is James Portis. I have a big ass uh, bag of gummy worms from Walmart that I'm very excited about. Um, and I got a new water bottle today. I'm super happy about it. Um, to my left, we have the Afrocentric, super awesome MB that we love so much. Um, hanging out, binging the Ms. Marvel trailer because they forgot to freaking do it before the show. We have Travis Tucker. How you doing today? I, I'm doing all right. This trailer is... I, I can see why the hardcore are mad. <laughs> We're we, we going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> and, and to my right, we have the woman who is my partner in crime doing all the good shit and apparently is writing a novel that we just found out about. Um, we're, we're, uh, we won't we're, know about that wrong, <laughs> wrong time, apparently. <laughs> Um, but we have Mary. How you doing this evening? <laughs> Let's not talk about the content of this novel right now. Oh, no, no, no. But <laughs> it's fun. I, I just wanted to poke at you because it's funny. And also, I yeah. totally started looking over it before the show, and I really like it. Um, okay. I'm, I'm digging where you got going on. But anyway, so, uh, but I, uh, how are you doing as I cut you off because I'm a dumbass? Well, fine. <laughs> I put okay. one of the plastic cover thingies over my desk that's about as much as i did today Ooh, okay all right so first topic as we've already kind of hinted at is uh marvel studios decided to drop a trailer for their up-and-coming disney plus show ms marvel on us and as already portrayed in the leaked posters and concept art that we already had previously we have finally gotten confirmation that uh, uh, Kamala Khan is not going to be stretching. She there there will be no embigging going on with this with this lady. Uh, Big are... names <laughs> <laughs> because apparently, uh, due to uh, well, due to concerns that Ms. Marvel's powers are too similar to Mister Fantastic. They are. They have gone. This, this, this is just speculation and rumor. That's the spe- specific part of there. But we have sh- shown from the trailers that she is going to be using um uh, the original Captain Marvel Marvel's mega bands to ha- like, to have sort of like psionic spectral energy powers, which I gotta say, Marvel, what the fuck. <laughs> Like it, it straight up feels like, and like, like every person has already made the joke, so I'll, I'll go ahead and knock it out. You you really feel like people are gonna have an issue with two different stretchy people, and they won't be able to tell the difference between a Pakistani girl and a white man. Like I I I I, I don't know what to, what to say about this one. Like it, it, like granted, it, it, is it gonna lead to a cool like new version of Kamala? Yeah, sure, whatever. But if you if you definitely gonna bet in like a year there's gonna be a new comic where someone walks up to Kamala and go, Hey, you're not an inhuman anymore, I have a Nega Man. Yeah, it's probably gonna fucking happen. I bet you any amount of money someone's gonna walk up to her and be like, You're not an inhuman anymore. <laughs> but what, like, I don't know. Um, Mary, how do you I feel mean about that this? is 
if they bring it over to the comics, that will be a mega America Chavez levels of retconning. Oh yes, because <laughs> like that that recent retcon was rough. Rough, I believe you mean stupid. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, like. I mean, how how you feel about like I, well, firstly, how do you feel about the trailer? Like, let, let let's let's not entirely like <laughs> bad on just because just because the, the, like just because of the mega bands. Like, how do you feel about the trailer? The trailer is not for us. I'm gonna be honest with you. Apparently, like, like I mean, I mean, I thought it was cool. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I grew up with teen dramas. It was cool. Like, I, I'm here for it. But like, like, I'll probably watch it. But like, the groan from Mary has me wondering what's what was about to go down. <laughs> it's uh, there's there's a lot, and you know, I've read the Wilson Miss Marvel run, and honestly, it's god tier level stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's damn good, and she wrote a lot of really dynamic characterizations and from what we've seen not all of that will transfer over no (laughs) um there is a lot of enthusiasm in the trailer with the actors and that's genuinely heartwarming to see and i'm kind of i'm I'm excited to see that because Mm. you know when it comes to superhero media you have to love the character you're playing or it comes through as hopelessly flat. <clears throat> so I, I'm excited to see, you know, uh, I'm excited to see Kamala come to the, you know, well, big screen, you know, TV, yeah. sh- TV shit. Um, but I'm worried about how it's going to pan out with already veering off so heavily from really you know her core power set like Mm -hmm. embiggen is an actual word in the dictionary because of the because of the comic like and they're turning her into what is essentially a green lantern ew I mean that's yeah, what the I joke for much Trav is that like, that she's just a purple lantern now. Like ever since the, the the leaks came out of like the poster, people have been calling her a purple lantern. But okay, but like, how does? Because uh, I don't I don't read Kamala Khan, so I couldn't tell you. She's she's one of those youth characters that is not for me. <laughs> um. But, like, how would that affect her characterization? Is she going to be dealing with similar stuff? You know what I mean? Does oh, she really need oh. to punch people with big-ass hands? Uh, it mm. ties a lot. There's an undercurrent of, like, body image issues with it. Because she gets hit with the Terrigan myths. And she immediately turns into Carol Danvers as Miss Marvel. So yeah. she can actually change her physical appearance to a degree. So it, it's not just, you know, super stretchy. It, there is a lot more complexity that the power brings. And, you know, particularly her being a teen girl, it's used thematically a lot as well. And I, it's just, I don't know how that's going to work with the Nega bands. I mean, part of me is like, y'all really wanted to save our budget, but like, the, the, this crystallization psionic shit almost looks more expensive than just stretching her body. But like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very much looking at this going, you're missing out on a core part of this character. And it really feels like since Marvel TV and Jeff Loeb messed up the Inhumans, this is like Feige going back and saying, yo, let's not talk about the Inhumans. Let's just really, really, really tie her into Carol and act as if, like, the Inhumans don't exist. Which, that's kind of cool, but, uh... But, like, okay... Go ahead. Let me put it to you this way. It would be like having a Wolverine media, but without his claws. It would be like having Batman with no cape or utility belt. Like, they don't need it to be the character, but it's an essential piece of the full picture, if that makes any sense. That that does make sense. Uh, but it's like, okay, so 
my extent of Kamala Khan is the trash Avengers game, all right? <laughs> that, story, that, that story mode was the bees knees. I will hear no slander uh, on that and, story and, mode. And to be to be totally fair and honest, I've only played the entry level part. You know what I mean? Where Kamala meets all the heroes and pretty yeah. much tells her her uh, schoolmates to fuck off because they all like backed her up, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I almost feel like with her turning into Carol Danvers, is that's what they're gonna play off of. Is her, mm. her her fangirling over the Avengers all the time? You know what I mean. Yeah, that's, what, that's what she already does. Like if you go back and yeah, read, that was... uh, but like she's the ultimate fangirl. That's the entire pitch of her as a character. I think it's oh, in the okay, first yeah, issue. I think it's in the first issue of Miss Marvel. She's looking at like the hits on her most recent fanfic. Yeah, like 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 they very much when K- Kamala first came out, she was sort of pitched to be like the new generation like Peter Parker of like, "Hey, you're the one that's going to be the new kid in town to be part of the Avengers and be like the fan girl and do this new for a new generation," which to the to, to, to which even ended up happening later, they acknowledged the reference by having a Kamala Peter team up book for like 5 minutes because it was very much like, "Hey, you're the new guard, and like to the point that we're even going to give you your own team team with the champions, which let's just kick time display Cyclops off this list and enjoy the rest of the next generation of heroes. Like, that was a good idea, but now with, with Kamala here, I, it very feel, feel much feels like they're, they're worried about what's going to happen in a couple years with Fantastic Four. So they're like, hey, let's take like the girl like the girl and let's lean into the Miss Marvel thing rather than just having it be an homage like, hey, my favorite superhero is Carol. So James really kind of hit it on the head when he um drew the comparison to Peter Parker is that uh Kamala's kind of set up as the new everyman superhero, if you'll pardon the term a bit. That, you know, Peter had a backstory that was you know, especially tangible to kids who were reading comic books at the time. I mean, you know, maybe not the whole uncle murdered bit, but you know, he was just, he he was a clean cut kid from a decent background who went to a decent school. And Mm. that is very much Kamala's archetype. She's a clean cut kid from a decent background who goes to a decent school. She just so happens to be from an immigrant family, which you know, is a genuinely underrepresented, you know, demographic, particularly in superhero comic books. I mean, this is this isn't exactly news. Mm-hmm. And it's it works. And I think a lot of that was Wilson's extreme dedication. And you can tell she poured every ounce of herself into this book. Right. Because, you know, when you hear when a lot of you know, the comic fan base heard Muslim superhero, they freaked the fuck out. And well, it, it was. Uh, is that more of like the comic or like an Islamophobia thing? It, it's an Islamophobia thing. But I was saying that she actually uses it, you know, as kind of. It's familiar ground to Muslim readers because we had a few Muslim readers that used to come in the comic book shop when I, um, when I worked there. And he would talk about how he really liked that Islam was portrayed in a way that was familiar to, um, you know, actual Muslims, but was easily explained without dumbing it down to non-Muslim readers. And, you know, Wilson herself is Muslim, so I, that probably helped a little bit. Makes sense. Ob- obvious sarcasm. But... I'm just worried because the first Miss Marvel run, Wilson's original stuff, it's kind of a Batwoman problem where her Hmm. origin is arguably her best story. And it's the same thing with Batwoman Elegy. Her origin story is largely her best story. Rough. And none of the writers who have picked her up since outside of team books haven't really been able to capture the same magic Wilson did. Right, and even recently with Ahmed, Ahmed's over here juggling two different books with Miles and Kamala, and you would think, like, because of his background, Kamala would be the stronger book, but both of them are, like, sk- like skirting the coattails of being even remotely decent. Like, that's what really boggles the mind of 
why are we a not giving the voices to the people that matter like when wilson stepped off that book you should have found somebody who was dedicated who felt strongly about kamala and gave them the book and let and have them run with it but now it's very much like other than like um uh who did who did champions last i forget um zub yeah what was it was zub like zub did his best to continue on with kamala like as the leader of this team but honestly it, it, it's it's sort of that same camp of like after the first few volumes they don't have enough to really go on so it's gonna be a lot of creative freedom and now it's, there, there's so much creative freedom they're like yo we're ripping away the fact that you're an inhuman and like shoving you up the freaking kree dynasty and it's like do, do 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 you really want that like and that's and that's what I'm worried about is when they ultimately run out of like hard material, they're also going to start doing the the comic retcons because this is Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yep. So how long until Kamala gets cancer? Kind of thing. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> or or how course, long? Or like... how long until until the person that assaults you becomes your dad? Like, wait, what? Excuse me. Are you? Is that a real thing? I mean, Carol Danvers gave birth to her own abuser. That's yo the the legendary Avengers number. uh, What is it? Two hundred, I think. Yo, that was definitely written by a dude. And the Avengers just let it happen. They 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 just let it happen. Like like, it it just goes off the rails, and no one cares anymore. It's It's like it's fucking Tigra, and Tigra is the only one who pops up and goes, "Y'all don't think this is a problem?" Like it it is so. But but anyway, but no, um, Travis, like from like like how how do you feel about it? Like obviously you're an outsider. Like this isn't for you. But in terms of like like you you think this is like 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 something your daughter's gonna peep when, when it comes out? Because as far as, like, I don't know, the faith sense is concerned, we're really, like, we're not religious. We're full-on heretics, but I do take some teachings from Islam, so maybe that'll help, but... They're going to downplay most of the Islam in the show. We're probably going to get a lot of it. We're probably going to get a lot of it in the pilot, maybe the first two episodes, and then I would be... I would be hard-pressed to see if Disney stuck around with it, because, you you know... They're good Christian audience. Right, and my understanding of Islam is more of like a Malcolm X kind of Islam. Not a, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know? So, like, it's not it's not the pure Islam, and it would be kind of a betrayal of what Islam is, because I have not read the Quran. So, I mean, I hope Cece likes it from, like, a maybe a youth fiction kind of standpoint. Mm-hmm. I, I think she will, because call to it. the original Miss Marvel book made bank and i mean bank on scholastic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They, right but they couldn't they couldn't stock it fast enough it's it's one of those things where like i, I maybe like as i get older i i find comfort in these weird like i'm a teenager and have no fucking idea what i'm doing and i like this person and don't know how to talk to them and that's kind of what i feel like we're gonna get from this you know what i mean a little we're, bit i mean I- ironically, there's a lot in the book that they're not going to be able to do because if they want to nix the Inhumans, she pals on with Lockjaw for a while, and not to mention her whole ass team up with Wolverine. Yeah. And you know the fact that her o- originally it was her bully is a lesbian and then they become friends. I don't know, it gets very weird. But like, you know, there's a game. Was gay that written by a there. man? Was that part written by a man? <laughs> no, it's actually it was it was Wilson the whole time. Yeah, and she did it Wilson. very well. It's just a weird situation to explain. Yeah, because uh, on paper what you just put in front of me is <laughs> basically the rich bitch cheerleader comes out and then gets ostracized. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, like, I, I will say, it, it, like, it, as a group, where we're we're, we're kind of side eyeing Miss Marvel, but like, but not for the reasons you'd think. 
Right. Like, we're not over here. Like, why is this over here? Like, I, I will say the biggest thing that's been irritating me about the Disney critics as of late was, especially from the turning red people that that, that are over here going, well, th this story isn't for me. Man, man, man. And I'm like, didn't you just tell motherfuckers if they wanted their own representation to make their own shit? Like, I'm doing that. Like, 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 I saw the best fucking TikTok of like, 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 like uh, someone going being like, 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 like you, you need to quit stealing our superheroes and go make your own stuff and make your own diversity. Okay, but and then, and then like they start making their own stuff, and that person comes back and says, "What are you doing? No, I want to be involved. You're, you're not. You're, you're excluding me. And your like, diversity. No. Your diversity is forced." No, Kiss my ass. No. <laughs> Now, James, as a white person, I need, I think it's my job to tell you that it, it can hurt not being involved or having white people around, you know? It, it's just, I don't think you can possibly understand how that feels. Oh, I love your sarcasm. Uh, I don't, I, I can't <laughs> possibly understand what it's like to be without white people. I'd like to know. <laughs> Like, 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 Mary, you're one of the few white people we we like. Like, 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 keep, keep that going. Keep I, that I, will, going. I, I don't, I don't mind being one of the good ones. I, oh my god, you took it right out of my brain! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, let's move on to our next topic real quick. So, the, um, how do I phrase this? DC, uh, like, like, uh, listen to, to uh, um, our return episode and went, okay, bet. And I'm like, what? So, what, what, you're asking what they, do I mean? I, they came out swinging for Pride Month. Like, because like, 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 cause that, that was our biggest criticism of, like, of our return episode uh, for episode 68. It was like, yo, if you're gonna start like, acting like, you, like, 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 like Pride Month is this big ass thing and care about different characters and whatnot, y'all need to put your shit where your shit's at. And they said, bet. Like, they said, okay, cool. So here's more Just Chambers spotlight. But then a Team Justice book is coming out telling about their origins and shit. And I'm like, motherfucker! <laughs> Like, am I really happy it's it's coming out around Prime Month and not sooner? Eh, but like, okay, marketing. like marketing, good, good job, proud of you. And and, and so to start from Can the top, we of get the list, Poison Ivy a new girlfriend. Well, oh, hold on there, hold on there, Travis. I have a, I have a list. So okay, like, like, ahead, Mary. I'll, that, let just, I'll, let, I'll let you go through it. No, I mean I have a list of women I think would pair well with Poison Ivy. Oh, that are okay. not Harley Quinn. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a ridiculous callback to the 2012 presidential election. I have binders full of women. No, and, I was hoping I'd get a reaction. No, I, I, I laughed and it was funny as fuck. Um, <laughs> so DC's uh, 2022 Pride celebration is, is is going full swing because not only are they gonna have multiple different Pride variants of other issues that have come out, like uh, so, uh Superman Son of Kal El number twelve. And Harley Quinn number sixteen. They're gonna have to, uh, like a new uh, like, what is it? A comic? Oh, it's a it's a book. It's a book, or is it a graphic novel? I can't tell. Um, the Galaxy, the Prettiest Star. Um, it's going to be like a brand new thing coming out as a free comic book day special edition thing. Okay, that's cool. It's a free comic book day thing. Um, well, like, like the hype I... of a brand new character, um, written by uh Jazia Axelrod and art by Jess Taylor. Uh, oh, it's a graphic novel, it's a it's, it's the, the free comic book day will be a preview to the graphic novel. Okay, so it'll be talking about gender identity, romance, and yo, uh, sorry, like, like... A, like alien princess disguised as a human boy is about to test her power. Oh, okay, good shit. I had skipped over that. Um, Yo, are we? Up? We're getting Pride Month Lobo. Well, we got Pride Month Lobo last year. What do you mean? What, Crush what is the, also. Uh, you realize I haven't. Day. Yeah, I haven't been out for that long. Um, so you gotta let me. You gotta let me catch up, bro. You gotta. You gotta let me do yeah, that. That's just because just you wasn't out doesn't mean you could have been. You couldn't have been looking at the good shit. What do you mean? I haven't. Okay, you gotta understand. Like, I haven't read Lobo since he ripped the fucking chip out of his head, proving that he was the original. Okay, Crush Crush and Lobo was, was a mini series that came out last year around Pride Month. I'll send. I'll send you the stuff about it. But no, nah, like, uh, so we got. I the feel like if. 
any on. comic book character would have a gay daughter, it would be, be Lobo. Lobo. Like Lobo. his wo- his womanizing is so intense, it made his daughter gay. Like he's like, no, I yes. need to pass on the womanizing to another generation. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it's nice to kind of see DC maybe taking a step back to what it was, which was the groundbreaking um, publisher of you know. Uh, queer superheroes and queer superhero content if you look at the list of glad awards and you know glad has an award for the comic book and they have since the early 90s and it's basically just the dc award i mean you know you have um flash you know from way back when when um pied piper comes out Mm -hmm. you have metropolis scu got one and it's just dc all up until you know the mid 2000s where admittedly we did see a bigger influx of people publishing this stuff but Mm. you know dc just kind of started to fall off with it and you know here's my fangirl coming out dc does is at its best when it's breaking through barriers and i'm not saying that from a rabble 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 perspective you know i'm just like that's dc's bread and butter because that's admittedly what they were founded on i mean look at a character like wonder woman you know dc then national basically went um okay sure why not mm-hmm. and it's just sorry um what do you mean sorry i'm letting you go i, I just it's because i'm a dc simp james uh, I mean, so I, all, all three hashtag, of us are if i can interject your real quick <laughs> Uh, yeah. if I didn't see Clark being the wholesome hetero dad from a million miles away, right? Like, okay, so like, oh, like you know, you know, like Lois covers. Lane is the kind of mom who will body check a homophobe. Oh yeah, you already know. Uh, like, you already know. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I love. Is like these companies. The, 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 there's multiple variant covers that are coming out. Um, like because there's the like there's two different uh Kalo ones that also oh, Su- Superman son of Kalo ones. There's t- uh two different Harley Quinn ones. There is um, two different Nubia and the uh, Queen of the Amazon ones, which I think is dope that uh, like they're allowing Nubia oh, to be queer. Tor. Oh no, here we go. She's with Eo, and I'm torn. Why are you torn, Mary? Because the because tension in Eo... that art. <laughs> no, no Eo is the biggest. She is the biggest Diana simp. Like, um. Pre new before Flashpoint, they be, they did the big fall of Themyscira when uh, Brother I did some shenanigans and basically started griefing all of the Amazons on Themyscira. Mm. And you know Diana's been working with Eo, who's essentially the chief blacksmith on Themyscira, to find out Eo basically you know made the healing purple rays into like this big soul crushing weapon. And Diana is so heartbroken, and Eo's doing the voiceover. And she says, just as I break her heart, she breaks mine. And you Ooh. see Diana kind of looking like she's going to go in for a kiss and then kisses Eo on the cheek. And then Eo starts crying. Like, and like Rucka brought that into rebirth too. So it feels like less like Eo getting her due and more, okay, I can't have Diana. So I'm going to go bang her sister. Like, that's what it yeah. feels like to me. <laughs> <laughs> that that's br- that's brutal holy shit <laughs> and oh. this is and this has been wonder woman nitpicking ruins it for everyone yeah. <laughs> then we got a uh, dc pride tim drake special which was it uh, you need to stop no one has time for your disrespect in my house <laughs> i mean tim drake is proof that even bi people can be boring that's so fucked that you know. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is so <laughs> fucked. Thank you. No, leave that my is, boy alone. That is alone. actually what I said when um <laughs> it came out. Anyway, um, not only will this special include the Urban Legends where he first came out, but it will also like have him t- uh, teaming up with his Young Justice teammates as well as ba- uh, the Batgirls for a special edition that will be coming out during that. And here, and, like, and because our social media manager Ian uh, like uh, said something about this, I will recognize this. 
while I'm not very happy that, like I said on episode 68, that Tim Drake is only getting to come out and play ball about being bi and being out and proud and shit, or just being a superhero at all, when it's convenient, but like, like and, but then the tagline at the end of the paragraph is, Tim Drake's 2022 path starts here, and my thing is, are we just gonna make Tim the like relationship Robin and nothing else, or are we actually going to tell new Tim Drake stories? Because Chip Zdarsky has announced that a he's gonna be writing Batman moving forward, and b he's gonna tell new stories with with, with Tim as the Robin. Which cool, that's dope. But I need to know that like Tim is gonna be doing shit and not just be a scapegoat for bi people. Like, okay, I, so I, I need there to be good rep here. There's one thing that you got to consider that's going to be kind of against him on this one is that to be fundamentally different from his other Robin counterparts, he has to be relationship Robin. Unfortunately, with I've noticed that with bisexuality in comics, it has to be performative. Because look at Catwoman, for example. Catwoman is bi. We've known this since, what, the 1840s. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we seldom She's see her inter... We seldom see her interact romantically with women. There's really only one massive instance in main universe. And um, it, it's just... It's the Genevieve um, Valentine run in during the New 52 where she where she thinks Batman is dead and so she starts you know, uh, making moves on this other woman. And, you know, they've got the big kiss scene, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of people who are genuinely upset because they feel like, and you know, it's with Wonder Woman too. You know, Wonder Woman is also canonically bisexual, but we seldom see them interact with other women, romantically, I should say. Mm -hmm. And that's really frustrating for a lot of readers. And unfortunately, it's kind of a cross between damned if you do damned if you don't and people feeling like they're trying to take praise for work that they're not doing right and so we're going to have to see tim um interact with um romantically with men a lot you know i i mean obviously bisexual men interact with men a lot but you get what i'm trying to say yeah i get what you're, is, I get what you're throwing down like, is that we're gonna have to see that but see, my biggest thing is, and um, I, I was even watching a TikTok that talked about it today, where it's like, you have Dick, who's the, the Robin that felt like he needed to divorce his own path. You see, uh, like, Jason being the rebel, like, the, the, the dude that needs to, like, be the more brutal, like, or interpretation of Batman. And then you see Tim, who is literally built to be the next generation Batman, that A, is being skipped over, which I'm still not happy about, and B is built to literally be the like, like the ultimate like like hero of the future and is just stuck in this mode where we didn't want to lost... shoot some in the face. I'm getting to that. We... Yeah, you don't remember that from Detective? Future yeah. Kate shoots him in the face. Yeah. And, 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 and to, to and disrespect like... my boy and say he's the best Batman replacement, bro. He is the best uh, Batman replacement. What the fuck do you no. mean? There you're allowed, to be, you're, you're allowed to be loud and wrong, James. Okay, but we all on. know it's Dick there is, No, 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 no. There is one successor to Batman, and her name is Cassandra Kane. Yes, but it has been fundamentally agreed, just because you don't like Tim, it has been fundamentally agreed by most of the Batman community that Tim and Cassandra are the two people that would take over. Dick reluctantly does it when he is called upon to do it because he's the, the best boy. He is reluctant to do it, but he does it because Bruce would want him to. He doesn't see, want to. Jason see, see. Jason doesn't want it. He will never want it. Tim is the best detective. He has been called the best detective. He is built to be the next generation of Batman, but he but every time Jeff Johns keeps getting a hold of him, every time that happens, they want to be like, oh, Tim would lose control and become a killer. And it's like, I'm, I'm no. hearing you, bro. I'm Stop hearing that. you. I'm and then Damien's you. the one who would become the killer because Damien's a fucking psychopath. We know this. Tim is the most balanced. Tim is the one that would literally be the best one to take over besides Cassandra. And that is fundamentally what would happen. I don't know if I'd so, call I, him balanced. I, 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 he stuck I disagree it in with, theft. 
I disagree with both of those fundamentals. You need to stop. And I say Mary, that. You need to and, stop. Yo, because okay, right now, yeah. we, we have Dick Grayson as Batman already, and he's proven to be exactly the successor for Batman we needed. But he, he has human. said both in, the, in that run, in the Morrison run, like the Morrison went out of their way in that run where they said... Dick doesn't want to do this. Oh no, if I know. If Bruce was alive, Dick wouldn't do this. Or if someone in the Bat family was older, Dick wouldn't do this. Hell, he's even said about um Jace Fox that he's like, better you than me, motherfucker, because I don't want to do it. Like, he is very firm on the fact that he doesn't want to put on the cape. So it's okay, like, but it's here's not the his problem. place. I, but I totally Tim hear you. wants it. And you're, you're, not, you're not hearing me, James. It. James, James, you said that already. You're not hearing me, James. Dick is the best Batman when he's the reluctant Batman, and that's why he's the best successor. The whole key to being Batman is not the urge to do it, but it's understanding the necessity. The key to I mean, being Batman. Point. But it is a fair point, and I, I, I respect that point. However... Tim literally took every bit of training from Bruce and showed that it can be built better. One of the best scenes was from Titan's run where he built the Belfry himself and Bruce was like, yo, you you probably are the one. And it shows. That's why that same run when um when they shit the bed and bring back future Tim, it literally makes you question everything for no reason because Tim is built to be the successor. And it's built that way for a reason. Now, will I ever get that? I don't fucking know. But in terms of this, in terms of the, the, the state of Tim Drake as a character now, I agree with Mary is that the struggle with bisexual like, like, like representation in general is that balance of being like, hey, I, I, I am attracted to both, both genders. I will choose these two different things. And they're probably going to lean more heavily that he's attracted to men, specifically because he kicked Stephanie in the, sh- in the shit and was like, get out of here. I, I want this. <laughs> and now it's like, get I'm going to go over. <laughs> right. Like, and now he's over here with, with his cute boyfriend, which is adorable and I love it. But you're definitely going to see that he's going to, the, the DC is going to force him to lean more towards men to keep that representation balanced. Same thing with, with, with Jonathan Kent. You're gonna see that same representation leaning in that direction because, like, DC probably isn't gonna hire a bi person to do that representation writing. Like, it, it's just what it is. So from there, um, the next big book that's gonna be coming out that we hinted at and talked about earlier is Multiversity Teen Justice. Which, for those who don't know, last year when they introduced um, uh, just quick in the background of Future State, they hinted that they had been a part of a another teen team from a different uh like multiverse called Teen Justice, and apparently this lineup has like a female Robin, um, a, a female version of Jackson Hyde called Jackie Hyde, um, a like a Supergirl and a, a Wonder Boy. And I don't know who that one is in the back. Um, and then there's a, a, a Clarion Witch Girl, which, okay, cool. That's kind of dope. And we're going to get that origin story of Jess Quick, which I find that to be very cool. It answers our criticism from before. Good job, DC. You, you did what you needed to do. Good job. Now follow through and give the people what they want. Good job. And then from there, they talk about how they're going to have different uh, variant covers for Pride Month. Like Travis mentioned, the one where, Super, where Superman is being the supportive, like, like straight dad. We love that. <laughs> and, then I, like, and then I love the one of, like, Bruce looking up at his bison, like, <laughs> bison. <laughs> and you got the fucking rainbows in the, in the sky. Is that going to be, is, is bison going to be Tim's next superhero name? I swear to God! <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> and then we have the really cool black, black uh, motherfucker. I, 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 I hate you, so much. <laughs> like I hate I hate you, Bendis, so much. But like to the person who retconned that, thank you, God. Um, and then we, and then we have the, the the really cool um like Aquaman the Becoming cover of Jackson and his boyfriend, which I find so good. Because like 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 no body shaming, we have we have a plus size character dating a superhero. Love that shit. Um, so no, oh. now what I'm gonna need DC to do is um, 
you know queer people can be adults, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and, and not I, only I love- Midnighter and Apollo. There could be other adults. Right. <laughs> and Batwoman. And Batwoman. And Batwoman. I mean, like, it just... Uh... Though I do love uh, how um, in, Su- in Superman and the Authority right now, I love how they're going back to that good relationship of, like, Midnighter being the ultimate power bottom and uh, Apollo being the clueless top. Like, he's just the, like, the clueless little, like, sunboy top. I love it to death. So props to the writing of that book. So I finally sat down and wrote and, re- and read it despite hating that Superman is the, the poster boy for it, despite Superman never being a part of the authority before. But hey, it's hey. Fine. Hey, he moves issues. He moves issues. You get Golden Retriever Apollo because of Superman. And what what, what I even loved about that was because the fact that in the like in the second issue, Apollo meets Superman is like I I really modeled myself after you at first, and then I found myself, and I was like, that's so cute. Good for you. I I love that. But it's 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 okay. Um, but no, I, I, like uh, since since DC finally like put their money where their mouth is, how we feel about about the, the, this year's Pride? Oh, forgot one more thing. Also, Poison Ivy, written by G Willow Wilson, um, is going to be is going to be a, a brand new series. They don't say mini, and they don't say limited series. They just say a brand new series starting on June seventh. Yeah where Ivy leaves Gotham City and sets out to complete her greatest work, a gift to the world that will heal the damage humanity has dealt to it. Oh, it's a six-issue story arc. Uh, I got high, I got, I got, I got overzealous. Um, it's going to be an incredible creative team of G. Willow Wilson and Marcio Takara, which these covers look fucking amazing. Um, so, yeah, no. Uh, Poison Ivy fans, rejoice. You finally get uh, like some, some good, good, good shit there. Um, how we feel about this? How many years well? later? How many so, years later? Right. <laughs> I'm Mary, not bitter at all. Mary, speak on it. You better go for it. Oh, considering that big lofty promises were made around Circle of Life and Death. You know, they did the whole, oh, if this sells really well, we'll flip it to an ongoing. And mm. it sold like, it, it made bank. And then, you know, Didio stood there with his fucking dick in his hand, not doing Ooh. anything. Ooh. And you know, Amy Chu ended up. Uh, Amy Chu seemingly was blacklisted for DC for pulling the best move in that book. Mm. <laughs> What'd she do? Um, see, had Ivy kill someone who looked like uh, uh, Eddie Berganza? Nice. Whether whether that was intentional or you know just a happy accident for legal reasons, I have to say I don't know. But it just my general uh, highly uh, unprofessional assumption is that's what happened. Um, you yeah, know that, that's glorious. We love that. Um, but no, Mary, how you feeling about this year's Pride in general, though? It's nice to see DC kind of get back up on their feet i mean there are a lot of uh, there's you know talent at dc who is very very uh passionate about this you know people like just chen andrea shea they seem to really be pushing very heavily Mm -hmm. and that's the kind of you know force that we need and (sighs) admittedly i know i literally just said shit about didio like 22 seconds ago <laughs> and to to give him credit where it is due he fought for he fought for the gay shit he did yeah. i mean you know considering dc when bombshells ended and i will say this in all of my years of reading comic books i've never seen a publisher release a statement about a book ending and the statement was DC kicking open the door going, oh my god, guys, we didn't cancel Bombshells. Bennett wants to do other stuff. We didn't cancel it. And then people got angry because they thought Bombshells was canceled anyway. So then Bennett had to sit there and go, oh my god, guys, I'm not, like, they didn't cancel it. I just, like, she's like, I've written 50 issues. I want to do something else with my life. <laughs> That's great. We love that. <laughs> Like, the, like she literally has to go. Don't kill DC, please. Just don't do it. No, I'll see. I'll see if I can dig up the tweet for you because it is so strange. I have never seen that happen. 
Because they were that they don't want to deal with the backlash, which I can kind of respect a little bit there. Yeah, and so like to have that kind of gravity be seemingly given to LGBTQ content again, because Bombshells was a total Wonka Bar situation mm. where it was made to sell the statues. Kind of like how the movie was made to sell the Wonka bars, but the opposite ended up happening. Where the uh -huh. movie took off and nobody gave a shit about the Wonka bars, and then the comic took off and sales for the statue stayed about the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could talk about bombshells for years. We need to do a bombshells episode, honestly, at this point. We, we definitely need to do that. Because um, I'm like halfway through it and then I like gave up for like, because I was just like, it was a lot, dude, just at one time. It, it is a lot. I have, I have gone through each page and done the count. There are officially more queer characters than straight ones. Love that. We need more of that. Let's have more of that, please. I um, like double. <laughs> um, Travis? Um, as this will be your uh, first year, like enjoying the, the prideness. Um, how are you feeling about this lineup of books? Little, little bitter. I need non-binary metamorpho already. Just make it happen, DC. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, fair enough. But like, like, are, are you are you hyped by any of these books? Like, like, well, like, I mean, I mean, you get you get Jess. That's, that's a little some some. I'm definitely gonna be peeping into that. Um. I'm probably going to avoid the Harley and Ivy stuff like the plague, but Nubia definitely has caught my interest. With the artwork, I just, I got to crack this one open. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, so one thing that I do want to pay, pay attention to the fact, though, is DC came out swinging for Pride this year to the point that, like, they know there are ongoing books for some of their, their queer characters versus Marvel that's just like, hey, guys, that Marvel Voices thing we got going on where, like, every once in a while we'll do a one-shot, like, collection of stories for, like, random diverse groups. You know, there'll be that again and have some variants, and it's like, shut up, Marvel. <laughs> like... I, I, I mean this in the most loving way possible because I, I, I know the people who created the Marvel Voices podcast and then were able to put the work in to get the Marvel Voices one shots made did it out of love and did it out of the need, the, 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 the desire to get more diverse things out there because like, there's been like there's been the Marvel Voices for, for black folks, for Spanish folks, uh, for um, for indigenous folks, what I, I thought was really cool, um, and LGBT folk. But my biggest c criticism of Marvel Voices is we only give a f like, like it's almost like my criticism of Black History Month that we always have is that we only care about these characters when it's time for their book and then like, like for their collection book, and then we never give a fuck about these characters again. Like, if we, if we really want to be that real about it in a month. Sam Wilson, Miles Morales, and T'Challa are going to be the only pe black people with solo books at Marvel. There's not a single character at Marvel right now with, with an indigenous book unless they're part of a team like the X-Men. There's not a single Spanish character at Marvel with a book besides Miles Morales, and he's only half Spanish. Like, I think you mean Hispanic. Thank you. Um, well, thank you're you for saying, that. yeah, you're saying Spanish as in like Spain. Yeah. So th thank you for, thank you for correcting me. I'm using it as a broad I mean, dude, like, uh, dude, you can like, you can take this part out if you need to. Well, I, no, like, I, 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 would ra I would rather have it on the record that you do correct me because like, like I don't want to speak out of term because like, it, it's not my department. I'm sort of speaking like for everybody who, like, like in terms of this. And it's very much like that's my biggest criticism of Marvel Voices is that while in in theory it's a great thing and it's a cool way to spotlight creators and spotlight characters, Marvel don't give a fuck about these characters at the end of the day. Like they don't, they really don't. Like unless like a, 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 they did, there would be multiple representatives of these groups with ongoings like the LGBT ones. You see. Um, America, Iceman, um, that up uh, that that non-binary character that's like, like really galactic looking that was supposed to be in a book but it got delayed or something and we still haven't heard about that still. Um, and Karma are all getting variant covers, but all those characters are on teams, so it's like, what? 
it's very much like y'all really don't care about these characters versus, and I, I don't like giving DC credit for this because DC is almost just as bad about this, but at least DC can say what what the Superman is currently by, Aquaman is currently gay, like the, they're they're at least trying versus Marvel that's just like, hey, here's your book once a year, bye, like that's all you get, bye, like. Like, Mary, am I, am I speaking out of my butt here? Not really, no. All right, fair enough. Okay. And I mean, like, you know, we can't, you know, DC needs to be held accountable because they've done this shit for, you know, years as well. But I think if we're doing apples to apples comparison in the current lineup, I would argue Marvel is doing far worse than DC is at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's my little bitch thing for, for two seconds. Um, moving on. Oh, dude, I think my edible's kicking in. Oh, this is going to get nice. fun. Oh, uh, I, mean, I mean, hi, Mom. I don't do that. <laughs> so. Hi, Mary's Mom. Earlier today. <laughs> Mom listens to the episodes. Love that. Um, earlier today. Um, Marvel came out and announced that Jane Foster is going to be returning uh, as uh, Thor in a book called Jane Foster and the Mighty Thor. And <laughs> that annoys me. My brain literally, like, 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 like there, you know that, that that face that like the person that's like super smiley, but like their eyes twitching, and they're just like, "This, I'm fine. Everything's fine. It's fine, guys. It's fine." Like that's me right now because. While I've I've been very firm that Jane is Thor when Jane picks up that hammer, just like how I was joking about the end of the Thor Hulk War book that's coming out soon, um, and there and one of the covers has Hulk picking up the hammer and having blonde hair. I was I was making fun of the comics gators on Twitter. I was like, oh no, Hulk isn't Thor. Why does he have blonde hair? Thor isn't a title. Big, big, big. That's what they did when Jane came came out as Thor. They like they threw that whole bitch fit. So I was making fun of that shit. But now, like, because like while I have always said Jane isn't for me, best believe. If Jane's the next generation or Jane is going to pick up that hammer, I'm going to defend her right to pick up that hammer just like I've defended when Storm did it. That's why I've defended Thunderstrike for doing it. That's what I'm going to defend for when Hulk just did it. Like, everybody can pick up the hammer. Who gives a fuck? Like, well, I mean, the whole point is that everyone can't pick up the hammer. Right. Right. I'm sorry. I, I, you opened the door and you're right. You're right. You're right. But no, um, but now the reason why I'm upset about like like while I'm okay, how can I phrase this right? The reason why I'm upset about this Jane book is not because Jane is Thor again. The reason why I'm upset about this book is because similar to the fact that we are getting a Steve Rogers Captain America book and a Sam Wilson Captain America book again, is Marvel's doing this shit. Where they're trying to say the characters are separate but equal, and I, I I'm making that, that I'm saying that sentence on purpose because while it comes off harsh for us black folks, it's the truth because Marvel is looking very sus right now of saying, "Hey, Sam can't be Captain America uh, for the broader audience without Steve being Captain America for the cishead white men who are gonna bitch." Similarly to this situation where they're saying, hey, Jane can't be Thor anymore without Odin's in the background for the the cishet white guys. And it's very frustrating because you look at this and it goes, hey, that 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 uh, Sam Wilson um, symbol of truth book I just pre-ordered at my comic shop. Thank you, Rubber City Comics is probably going to sell less because there's two options, and what is the, the, the stereotypical white guy going to pick up when they walk into the comic shop? The white man or the black, the black man? The white man. Similar to here. It, like, granted, it's, the, it's one book that kind of, like, like, corrected their problem with Sam and, and Steve. That there's only one book. I bet you $100 if there is a Jane book and an Odinson book, motherfuckers are going to pick up the Odinson book over the Jane book because of the fact they, that the, the, the main direct market is going to cater more towards those white characters. And it sucks. And Marvel needs to stop doing this and actually give the next generation a chance instead of just letting the cishet white men win. 
So that's my soapbox about this. Mary, actually, no, Travis, I'm going to let you go first. You haven't got to go first in a minute. How do you feel about this Jane thing? Standoffish, to be honest with you, because I I would like to see, like, maybe an unworthy Thor, like, from the comics with his eternal goat, like, companion hit the MCU. I think that would be awesome. But at the same time, I'm apprehensive because I was a big fan of Mjolnir being like, no, you're a piece of shit, Thor. I don't, you're not worthy anymore. It's her. It's her now. <laughs> but mm-hmm. in the MCU, Mjolnir is totally destroyed. So I don't know how that's going to happen. Right. Well, uh, apparently, well the, way, the way Love and Thunder is looking because of all the multiverse shit that's going on, it looks like Jane might pop out of a multiverse portal or some stupid shit, but what? what, what God, we'll see that would go. make me so angry. Yeah. Yeah. That, like, that, it, it that's just, where just, we're at right now. Unless have Mjolnir, Mjolnir fall ring out of there. a portal or something and hit Earth. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Like, <laughs> like, that would make more sense than them going, hey, Jane's from a different universe, but we'll, time will tell. Just have her in the winged helmet come out of a portal in the multiverse of madness. I think I'd walk out the theater. <laughs> you know, all I want to know is how much, how much did they have to pay Natalie Portman to come back? Yo. Right, because there's that moment during Comic Con where she walks up and Taika hands her the hammer, and it's like y'all, y'all had to have given her a fat ass check. Well, well, Patty Jenkins was her. Pick. Yeah, yes, Wonder Woman Patty Jenkins was Natalie Portman's hand pick to direct Thor the Dark World, and then Disney fired Jenkins off of Thor. Which I will say firmly that if Patty Jenkins would have directed Thor the Dark World, casuals would have finally understood uh, the fucking Asgard, and we wouldn't have had to blow it up in the next movie. But that, that's all I'm going to say. Fuck you, Taika Waititi, but it's fine. You can't, you can't say that because he he's bringing Natalie back. <laughs> but that, that's why I hate it because like he literally t- like made Ragnarok <laughs> this casual, friendly, annoying piece of shit where they See, go, "Hey, we can't, we can't, we can't do a World War Hulk, so we're gonna shove this in here." Make first of all, freaking fr- like family some, friendly. Put some and, respect on it. No. It's Planet Hulk, Planet uh, Hulk, and World War Hulk because Travis. Friendly reminder, you know Meek, the little bitch that there's died. Nothing, there's that died. More about this. Anyway. I, I, I know. I've read it. Yeah, you Meek know. Kills you, Rick Jones. <laughs> Meek, Meek kills Rick Jones. Meek is the reason why a Hulk's wife dies. Like, yeah, there's a whole Meek is thing a piece there. of shit. He should not have been comic relief. I agree. Right. Like, but, like, 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 and then they go, "Hey, also because like, like Asgardian lore is too hard for casuals to understand. We're just gonna nuke Asgard and kill the Warriors Three right in front of everybody. We're gonna to take emphasize the how we're doing it, and we're gonna take it, the best didn't... potential solo Ruffalo movie and completely fuck it in the scramble. Yes, like." <laughs> That's why when anybody comes up to me and says Ragnarok is like like is a great movie, I'm like for you because See, you don't I, get what it's shit. I will never say it. Ragnarok is a good movie, but See, I, I don't will give a defend shit. the Dark World first. <laughs> See, here's the fun part for me is that I don't give a shit about Marvel Thor, so I had a great time at Ragnarok. Like I was super annoyed that you know when Valkyrie's doing her like badass walk across the Bifrost then Aww. Hulk just has to like face plant into it and I'm like this, <laughs> this isn't necessary but like I I, at, least, <laughs> at the very least at the very least I got to stare at Kate Blanchett for two hours and I mean who doesn't like doing that in tight leather <laughs> in sexy tight leather evil Kate Blanchett so I had a great <laughs> fucking time just an announcement Mary's a sub just want everyone to know that I mean, I mean, to be fair, Kate Blanchett straight up like walked on the set, and uh, hold, hold on, I, I gotta make this this joke actually stick. Give me like two seconds. I, I kind of wish I was the set in that instance. I get it. Um, <laughs> fucking like uh, I, I I can't find you know. Okay, so like literally, I do she, like, like a woman Kate Blanchett. Yeah, no, which is fair, but no, I love how Kate Blanchett literally walks on set and literally just, like, femdoms the fuck out of, out of Carl Urban, and, like, Carl Urban's just like, okay, 
Like, he doesn't even question it. Which, that was still one of my most annoying things. Which is like, hey, Carl Urban's supposed to be the executioner. It's like, he's supposed to be fucking Enchantress's bitch. And it's like, nah, we're gonna, we're gonna make him Kate Blanchett's bitch. I'm like, we're, we're, we're not gonna talk about how, uh, like, fucking Kate Blanchett is supposed to be Loki's uh, daughter, not his sister. But okay, whatever. We're not we're gonna ignore that. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, the MCU could could afford it, I guess, but now in like (laughs) uh, (laughs) now in like five years, when um, Neil Gaiman knocks on uh, Disney's door and wants a paycheck, and they try to introduce Angela, we're gonna be like, "Hey, Thor had a second sister." It's gonna be like, "Wait, what?" (laughs) I said he had two sisters. I mean, particularly since they gave. Hella, so much of Angela's origin. I really did. Like it was actually. I'm just kind of like going, oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> just send her back to spawn. Just send I her mean, back to spawn. <laughs> I, I've always been of, 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 of the belief that anything that that like scars top Tom McFarlane is is for the better. But like. It's it's fine because like and then apparently Tom McFarlane has come out and said he's gonna direct the the Jamie Fox Spawn movie and I'm like shut up you old man like just shut up and enjoy your toy factory like you don't you don't need to make another Spawn movie just enjoy your toy money like and be happy that's all you need to do stop you stop it so hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just like every every few months or every like 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 year and a half or so, we get like a random uh, like news update. Tom McFarlane, Jamie Foxx, Spawn movie, and I'm like, just in, like you old man, just enjoy your money, like d- like enjoy your toy money. You don't need to bring Spawn back. Like like w- w- Spawn was great. Like Michael Jai White did his best, and Spawn still makes you tons of money in print. But in, in toy in your toy factory is doing great with DC. Just let it go. Just let it go, Todd. L- let Jamie Fox rest. Jamie Fox doesn't need to be in another superhero movie. Let it go. This this, this qualifies as black on black crime. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Explain. Got, got a black man here talking down another black man. Can't Jamie just... Foxx doesn't need no more money. Like, I'm talking Spawn, not Jamie Foxx, just Spawn in general. Like, I'm over here hurt. I love Spawn, okay? I love Spawn too! <laughs> Do you know how hyped I was when they got fucking Keith David to come back and voice him in Mortal Kombat? That was my shit! But I'm over here like, yo, just let it die, man. Like, no one needs another Spawn movie. Like... Let 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 us enjoy the glory that was um John Leguizamo in a fat suit and let it go. Yo, like, John Leguizamo's violator is criminally underrated. Criminally. Nothing will top it. Nothing will top it. Like like that was the best. Like when 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 uh, Mary and Victoria came in for my birthday, we showed Victoria Spawn. We were dead ass. Like this is the only good part of this movie. Michael Jai White doing his best. And John Leguizamo are the only good things about this movie. Otherwise, John Leguizamo it all. carried the whole movie. Carried the whole movie. Like you're gonna and hate. You're gonna. You're gonna hate the fucking dude. Um, fucking. Uh, you're, you're gonna hate. Uh, Martin Sheen. You're gonna hate. Uh, the fucking weird ass. Um, dominatrix bitch. You're, you're gonna hate everything. But John Leguizamo and Michael Jai White are the only things about this movie that are good. And, and Victoria like, just looks at me and Mary like, what the fuck have you done to me? <laughs> to be fair, though, a, a, a new Spawn movie I think would be pretty sick. At least with new technologies and maybe a halfway decent cast. Because Jamie Foxx can act. Michael Jai White can only uh, fight. I, I don't know. After we, we took fucking nerdy, like, uh, comb over Electro and made him hey, put his uh, fucking you're no way home. Say, you're not about to slander <laughs> Electro and Tim's. You're not. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just shaking my head. Oh, flat out in that movie, fucking lizard of all people looks over at Jamie Foxx and goes, didn't you used to have a comb over? And Jamie Foxx doesn't say shit. He literally just looks up in the air and just doesn't say shit. They gave my nigga a lineup and Tim's, bro, I wasn't going to say nothing. Not a fucking word. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, but no, nah, but no, nah, Barry. How do you feel about fucking Jane coming back in this way into the comics? If it is like just Jane from a different universe, I'm gonna be super grumpy. Well, the solicit just... specifically, specifically says in the comic that randomly Mjolnir shows up in her apartment without Thor, and she must become Thor again to figure out what the fuck happened to Thor. Okay, okay, sorry, my brain got sidetracked into movie land there for a second, but, I mean, I don't know, it just bugs me, because, like, that was the whole point of her being Thor, like, and the title bugs me, because she was Mighty Thor, that was, like, that was the point. Yeah. You guys think she might fight Mangog or no? Mm-hmm. In the movie, that'd be kind of dope. Well, yeah, well apparently we're getting Gore the God Butcher played by Christian Bale, which that that alone sounds cringe. That what do you mean cringe? What? Who's better for that particular character? It's not my name. That explains what I do. But what I, I do, okay. that we explains just, what I hey, am. We just had the Twilight Vampire crush it as Batman. I don't want to hear you pigeonholed no actors, bro. Come um, on. Terminator <laughs> Salvation says hi. Uh, that's one movie. What about... Uh, all the Dark Knight movies say hi. Yeah, yeah, he was a pretty good Batman. Those were no, literally no, acclaimed, as, no, those were literally no, acclaimed as the best Batman movies to date I by will, the public. I will you were just my, being a hipster. I will sit on my throne and say Michael Caine carried uh, the first a, one. It's at and the little kids' table, bro. <laughs> my, my Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman carried the first one. Heath Ledger carried the second one, and that third one can die in a fire. I will stay on that throne. Thank you very much. Um, okay. And that third one is dog water, and I will, I will fight and, you on that. Okay, but being Odin's edgy brother is pretty good. I thought for, the God Butcher was his grandfather. Either way, I want to see him and Thor crack planets when they fight. That's what I want. Mm. Um, but no, that's, <laughs> that, that's us ranting about Thor and Spawn for like 10 minutes. Um, the, our next topic, I'm going to skip the, Bla- the Black Adam thing because that really isn't that important. Um, if, I, if I don't talk about this next piece, um, <laughs> Barry, if I don't talk about this next piece, Ian will crucify me. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm making that very clear. Even though I do love me some Gail Simone, because Gail, you can write a fucking good book. Um, it was revealed that Gail Simone is returning to Marvel once again to write a brand new Jessica Jones story called The Variants, where Jessica Jones goes on a multiversal uh, detective mission, to, uh, like when she finds multiple versions of herself existing in the same, uh, like like a plane of existence, and I. I Gail has a balancing act. And what I mean by that is Gail has a job on her hands to separate herself from Bendis once again. And has she done it before? Yes, yeah, she's done great at separating herself from Bendis. But can she make Jessica Jones compelling without dragging Purple Man into it? Please, God, tell me you can. Because I want to see Jessica Jones gritty fucking being a badass but also talk about her superhero shit and be awesome without talking about purple man because i'm tired of of, like it's the same shit with the joker and batman stop acting like you need purple man to tell a jessica jones story that's my one plea gail please tell me a jessica jones story that is good without dragging freaking purple man into this that's all i ask there you go I think if anyone can pull that off, it, that's Gale. Yes. Like, I mean, through and through. That's like the one thing that I'm like, because like when, when this when this news dropped, I was like, yes, I'm about it. But like, please, God, just remove it, like Purple Man from the equation. That's the one thing I beg is like, I will I will let you write whatever the fuck you want about Jessica, but just keep him far away from it. That's all I ask. Um, real quick, because I closed my tab on accident that talked about the run. Because she talks about in the press release that... Um, first, first, let me get this out. When Tom Brevoort offered me the, 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 the project, I went and reread all of Jessica's stories, from the classic groundbreaking Brent Bennett stories to the most recent... 
Kelly Thompson stories, and they're just exciting, compelling reads. Uh, there isn't another comics character like her that it was immediately exciting. So, and apparently uh, Jessica's going to risk it all in this book, which, that's cool. I'm down. But even I will admit that Kelly Thompson had trouble, like, keeping Purple Man away from the bullshit. I need compelling Jessica Jones without dragging up her, her, her bullshit from the past. Like, obviously with multiverse stuff and different time frames, it can happen. But I need to see Jessica move forward, not backward, if that makes sense. As somebody who also is a assault survivor, I want to see Jessica be more. That's my biggest plea. Um, like, am, am I being fair there, Mary? I would say you are. Okay, because, like, I, I don't want to speak out of pocket because, like, Jessica is a character that I've cared about for a long time because of what I've been through, and I just want to see more than w- what it, what has happened. I mean, I you yeah. know, I haven't read a lot of Jessica Jones, but it seems like what happened is she just gets re-traumatized a lot. Yeah? And, like, yes, in a sense, I'm using air quotes, makes for compelling reading, but do you know who else has gotten decent exposure, if we're being completely honest, and is also the victim of assault? Karma. Yeah. I mean, we find out about her assault in her first appearance. It's mentioned period, like, very occasionally. And even then, sometimes it's hand-waved. Because in mechanics, um, Kitty's doing the voiceover and she's talking about karma and... You know, she mentions that they're political refugees and she said, but karma won't talk up, doesn't like to talk about what happened to her. Like, that's as far as it goes. So we don't need to, like, re-traumatize karma every issue. I can really only think of one instance where it happens, where Danny's powers malfunction and she projects it out to the rest of the new mutant. Right. And... And if anyone can write a story about a woman without having to rely on a traumatic event, I would think it would be Gail. I mean, Gail did it when it fitted you back, girl, so I guess yeah. you can do it. No, that's, I, 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 that should be my, my biggest like quote there. Um, so, you know, that's, that, that's just my, my one concern I needed to throw out there. And, like, Gail... You you have always had it have have had an extended invitation to this show, whether it be for any of your work. But I would love to, for you to come on here and talk about this the series and what you're going to do differently with her, or just come and shoot the shit because I love your Twitter so much. And, <laughs> and, and, and if you come here, I'm in a fanboy over your uh, Secret Six run. I just want you to know right now. We still need to revisit the, 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 our little Simone saga thing. Um, but no, um, uh, go, go when ahead, I Mary. met her, when I met her at C2E2, it had to be very quick because, well, one, there was a significant line and two, um, <laughs> Victoria really kept my ass on track. She's like, look, they appreciate that you're fans, but they don't need you to talk at them for 45 minutes. Let's just go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, oh. my edibles kicking in. No, you're good. You're doing good. Um, so, uh, from the, like, uh, Travis, do you have any opinion about um, Jessica Jones at all? Your, uh, my extent of knowledge of her is literally Netflix, <laughs> and okay, I'm assuming pur- Purple Man is Kilgrave. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I just I didn't mean, make him purple. Yeah, which I get it, but still the amount of purple man we had and even the show we could do without thank you all right (laughs) last thing and we're still on the marvel what the fuck are you doing train so marvel has been like hinting and dropping teasers for a few months now that they were going to be coming out with a brand new event comic and now we've got a trailer and a poster for Marvel Judgment Day. It's going to be an event featuring the Avengers, the X-Men, and the Eternals. And the pitch, the, the, the big elevator pitch is, what if the Eternals showed up and said that mutants were deviants? And I'm... Brutal. Absolutely what? brutal. <laughs> like, Absolutely brutal. 
Like, you know what this sounds like? This sounds like a, like a, like the Eternals made enough money that we're going to try to do what we did last time where the Inhuman steamrolled the X-Men, but the, the work that Hickman did with the X-Men isn't going to allow that to happen this time. Like, we y'all rebuilt the X-Men to a point where they're not capable of annihilation and sterilization like you did before. Bro, like, I swear to God. enough. Watch, watch, bro. If we get some weird, like, Icarus nuking Krakoa. God, bro. I... Oh, like, shit. Oh. It's gonna start so much shit. Like, Eric Lyncher is literally gonna rip that man in two, and that will be just the funniest shit ever. Like, I just... I look Best at this book... responsible for the Terrigan mists that killed so many X-Men. <laughs> I just... I, I... I, I I look at and the pitch is like I, I, that literally was the pitch of like what if like uh like mut- mutants were de- like apparently are being called deviants and like it's gonna have multiple issues like Karen Gillan's like like writing it and like normally when when Karen Gillan writes a book that's gold on paper like that's literally all you need is is his name and I'm I'm in but when I saw this my brain went the fuck are you doing sir. Sir, I need you. I need you to. I need you to rewind and redo. Like I need you to to come back to Earth for me a little bit and and, re, and revisit that that pitch. There's there's some possibility for greatness in there though. Like I'm imagining like something that I want to see, and I mentioned it in the chat when you brought it up was a, a Festus amped Nimrod. That would be kind of cool. That would be fucking insane. Yeah, Fastos, Fastos and Nimrod would be kind of cool. Yeah. Well, it's just like, and then you got fucking Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, um, Echo using the Phoenix Force, which I still don't know what the fuck is going on there. Um, and Carol and Thor trying to be the the middle ground between the Eternals and the X Men, and I'm like, huh? well, Cyclops gonna get along with anyone? How Cyclops? How are Cyclops and Icarus gonna sit at a table and discuss things? Right, <laughs> like <laughs> those white boys ain't gonna do shit. Because it, it's gonna be hard for me to swallow Cyclops working with the Avengers after everything that he's like said to them. Well, and we're, we're 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 in new ground. We're in Hickman ground. So like like half that shit doesn't matter. We we've retconned a lot of shit. But so. still, Hickman ground was still the ground that was like, hey, I know Sabretooth just broke into your place and robbed you, but fuck you, he's coming with us. Like that's still Literally. Hickman Cyclops. That happened. Yeah. Right? That, that did happen, which is glory. I, we need to go back and read it as all Hickman shit because now that's wrapped up. We need to go back and do that, um, especially with like the new books for launching soon and whatnot. But Mary, how you feel about the, the, this event book? Because I, I, I just, I'm really concerned about what Marvel's doing. Seems like they're desperately trying to get back to, um, oh, uh, what's how am I thinking of phrasing this? It seems like they're desperately trying to get back to the days when the X Men were an allegory for minority communities. And in recent years, given their actions or, you know, just the mutant narrative in general, it's not really that anymore. Mm. Like, and so, you know, having the eternal show up and call them literally calling them deviants. Like, yes, I know that that's what they're called, but like, it's a little obvious. Okay, maybe I could shed a little light because, like, as far as like the 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 black nerd circles that I'm in, a lot of them are X Men fans, and because of uh, and more so because of what Hickman has been doing to them. Um, like one one thing that I see like quoted is really powerful is when they meet with all the nations and Apocalypse is with them, uh, and they're like, "You could call me A. My name is too great for your lips," kind of thing, like. Ooh. A lot of the black nerds that I was fucking with were so heavy into that part of Hickman. They loved that shit. The whole idea of, like, Krakoa essentially became a, a, a mental gymnastics new Wakanda, if you will. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that's clear as day. As day, and that they were every everyone that I knew was about that shit, and so maybe this will bring like a I, I don't know I. It, the oppressor thing is kind of overdone, and the Eternals being an eternal oppressor is kind of fucking really, really tacky, in my opinion. So, I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. So, that was like that was the one that I want to talk about, because like, this event shows that Marvel really doesn't have a vision of their future. They're just kind of going whatever and just letting this go on because like Jason Aaron did a bunch of shit for a long time and everyone let it happen and now we're just like Eternals are are, are trying to like annihilate the X Men now and it's like what Marvel's event kitchen sink <laughs> <laughs> that that was good that that one wins the episode that, 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 there we go. That, 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 I'm, I'm gonna call that episode the kitchen sink now because that, that was just perfect. Um, all right, folks, that that's a great way to end it. Um, the, the, don't forget that you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, basically anywhere that you can listen to a podcast except for SoundCloud. You can check us out, so make sure that you do and follow us on Twitter at PTP underscore podcast. Travis, after that zinger, what is your closing statement for the episode? Uh, Shit, I don't even have one after that. Uh, support your local comic book shop. This is that's the only way that we're gonna get more of these these pride books. We're not gonna get any more expansive pride books without that kind of support. Pre orders, please. Pre orders, please. All right, uh, Mary. Now that he stole well, my, my line, what's your closing statement? See, now I'm concerned that Disney's gonna send like a cease and desist to us because we said the word gay a lot. Um. Come for me. Oh, come on. That one was... that. That's a good one. That was a good one. But my, I'm saying Disney can fuck with me. Oh, and you know, also they can just fuck right off for everything in Florida. Um, yeah. So, uh, my closing statement. Um, if you have the means, I guess I should say, uh, look into donating to charities that are benefiting the Ukraine right now. Because, yeah. That's... Yeah. Um, my closing statement, as always, is support your local comic book shop. Fuck Travis. Um, and like, because, like, 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 like he said, supporting your comic shop means like getting that pre order in, even if it's a digital pre order. Pre orders matter. So make sure you reach out to your comic book shop, even with the horribleness that's happened recently with comicsology, which we should probably talk about that at some point. It's um, evil, gross, and I hate it. I have not I, I, touched the app since. I, I, it, it was rough. I tried. I tried to like find a Marvel book to cover next week, and it was just like that. That that new interface is horrible. Um, but we'll talk about that probably next week. Actually, that'll be a good idea. Um, just just help your comic book shop in any way you can, folks. Also, um, seeing as this 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 podcast specifically is queer led, it would be horrible of us not to talk about the fact that if you can donate to a charity that benefits uh, trans kids currently in in uh, like in Florida. And well, please make sure that you do. And or, Texas. Or, and Texas. And like, just and basically, if there is an LGBTQIA plus charity in Texas or Florida, or just anywhere, because there's several places that are trying to pass similar bills, please make sure that you do donate because um, we we need your help more than ever. Look into seeing uh, donating to Trans Lifeline. It is the um, trans suicide hotline. I will and, have the notes for that in the show notes, so please make sure you reach out to that. That is a great thing. Hey, thank you. Um, because, oh, like, yeah, I, no worries, dude. You know, so, like, I, I, that was just one note I wanted to end on, because if we, if we, we wouldn't be who we are if we didn't stick by our own damn values. So Exactly. Yeah, and, like, now that we can officially say that this show is fully queer-led, Best believe we there will be more representation on the show that we can like like similarly me and Mary have gone through that effort and brought queer creators and like and queer voices on, onto the show previously. You will see a continuation of that. You will see even more of that because we care about getting that information out to the public and, get, and getting more like representation for our people. So get ready for that shit. And we are gonna keep doing what we do best, motherfuckers. So just be ready for that. Um, uh, I forgot how to talk. You can catch us next week right here at Panel 2 Panel. Peace out.